the cross. All right, we're going to be in Psalm 29 this morning, 29 verse 11. Uh, Gilbert was praying and uh, he said something about perfect peace being in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thought, does he read my notes? Because that's uh, what my message is going to be on this morning. <clears throat> um, blessed with peace. <clears throat> Psalm 29, verse 11, the last verse in this um, psalm. Uh, David said, the Lord will give strength unto his people the lord will bless his people with peace so pe uh, peace is a blessing amen and uh he said he'd bless his people with peace so i want to talk to you a little bit this morning about blessed with peace let's go to the lord in prayer but father again we're thankful for the opportunity to be here your many blessings uh, toward us we're thankful lord especially this morning for the blessing of peace and i pray lord if there's uh, somebody here who listens to this uh, sermon online and they don't have the, the peace of God, uh, that they get saved and, and trust you, Lord, and see uh, exactly how they could be blessed with peace. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot of uh, talk in the world about peace. It seemed like every president for the last hundred years uh, has uh, promised peace in their time, you know, work toward peace. Nothing new. In September of uh, 1938, Neville Chamberlain, the um, prime minister of uh, England uh, came back from Germany after signing a, a peace accord or a non-aggression accord uh, agreement with uh, Adolf Hitler. I uh, said Chamberlain returned to his official residence, uh, number 10 Downing Street. There was a jubilant crowd outside that shouted, good old Neville, and sang for he's a jolly good fellow. From a second floor window, Chamberlain addressed the crowd and invoked Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli's famous statement upon returning home from the Berlin Com uh, Congress in 1878. He said, quote, my friends, this is the second time in our history that there has come back from Germany to Downing Street, peace with honor. I believe it is uh, peace for our time. Uh, then he added, now I recommend you go home and sleep quietly in your beds. Mm -hmm. As Britain slept, the German army marched into Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia in peaceful conquest of the Sudetenland. The bombers did not roar over London that night, but they would come in March of 1939, October, September, October. Eight months later. Hitler annexed the rest of Czechoslovakia and two days after the Nazis crossed into Poland on September the 1st, 1939, the prime minister again spoke to the nation, but this time he solemn, uh, was a to solemnly call for a British declaration of war against Germany that, that launched World War II. Eight months later, Chamberlain was forced to resign and he was replaced by Winston Churchill. Uh, Hitler talked a good game about peace and he ended up being responsible for the death of upward to 70 million people during World War II that were killed. Peace, peace, peace. Um, he killed six million Jews in the Holocaust. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, the Bible says, and through his policy, talking about the Antichrist, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. <laughs> uh, the word peace occurs in the Bible over 400 times. Uh, has a lot to say about peace. I'm not going to preach you a 400 uh, point sermon uh, this morning, but um, you, the only way you can uh, bring uh, peace to this earth, the only way it's going to happen is through the pen, Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the world doesn't want to have anything to do with him. So there's not going to be peace until he comes and sets up peace. In Psalm 4, verse 8, the Bible says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. If you're trying to, uh, to, to get the uh, peace and the benefits of peace any, any other way besides the Lord Jesus Christ, you're spitting in the wind. It's not going to happen. It only comes through the Lord. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. 
my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Our text says the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Bless his people with peace. Now, how does one get that peace in, in, in a troubled world like, like we're living in? How can a child of God ensure that the world that's falling down around him and is in turmoil around him and, and, and strife and conflict, uh, how, how can a child of God have peace in the midst of all that? Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be thankful. So you got a choice in the matter. You can, as a child of God, let the peace of God rule in your heart, or you can live in turmoil and be tore up all the time, whatever the opposite of peace is. Amen. All right, first of all, I'd like to say this. If you want to uh, enjoy the blessing of peace, first of all, you need to love God's word. In Psalm 119, 165, the Bible says, Great peace. Have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Not just peace, but great peace. So how do you get it? Love the word of God. I'll say it again. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. You know, that was going to be some, some United Nations Council, and passing some laws, taking some guns away, and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you want peace as an individual, love God's word, love his law, love the Bible. You love the word of God. I, I, I've, I've heard people say that they do, but, you know, you could you could tell if somebody loves somebody or loves something by the way they act. You know, like if you love somebody, you want to spend time around. Them. If you love something, you want to you want to spend time with that that thing whether it's a dog or a hobby or a sport or something like that you spend time with it you, you love it well if you love the word of god you'd spend time in it and if you tell me you love somebody and you don't want to spend time with them i'm kind of suspected suspect of your profession that's a nice way of saying i think you're lying to your teeth amen <laughs> well praise the lord do you read it? Do you study it? Do you want to know more of it? Uh, you want to learn it? Do you want to memorize it? Uh, do you spend time with the Word of God? If you did, if you if you loved it, you would. Um, when, if you love the Word of God, you'll spend time with it. Amen. Uh, you, 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 when you uh, when you read that book, you see that the Lord uh, He knows what He's talking about. Amen. Uh, like he said over in Isaiah, he, he calls the end from the beginning. And uh, you, you get a you get a sense of peace like, hey, everything's in, under control. The Lord's not taken by surprise. Amen. I don't know how, how it is with you, but when I read that thing, I, I get a, a peace and assurance, a calmness, knowing that the Lord's in control through that fulfilled prophecy. Uh, everything's going to come out like he said it would including what he said about you or what he says about you. You know what, you know what he said about you. If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> he, he said, you're, you're, you're destined to live in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout eternity with a perfect body, no sickness, no pain, no sorrow, no death. <laughs> I, I said that out loud and it just kind of, I got a peaceful reassurance and a calmness over me. Uh, just from saying that out loud, you, that that's your destination, folks. That, that's what's going to happen to you if you're saved. And you get that from reading the word of God. Uh, the Bible says over there in Revelation 21, verse 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes 
and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. You ought to love them. And if you loved him, you'd spend time with him. You spent time with him. You'd have some peace in your heart um, about uh, circumstances, about things that are going on. It does. Um, if it, if that didn't give you peace, man, I don't I don't know. Something be wrong with you. If the word of God doesn't give you peace, you ought to love the word of God. Um, the Bible tells about a woman that that loved the word of God over there in Luke chapter ten. The Bible says, verse 38, now it came to pass as they went, that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Amen. She sat down at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now, Martha was in turmoil. She was cumbered about serving. He doesn't rebuke her for serving. I mean, you know, that's, that's good stuff. That's nice to, to do. But there's one thing that's necessary, that's needful. And he said, Mary's chosen that part. And that's sitting at his feet and learning the word of God, hearing the word of God. Both were important, but the word ought to take precedent over the service. The word should spawn service. I think a lot of Christians try to replace the word with service. It shouldn't be like that. If you love the word, you're going to have peace. He said, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If you find yourself getting offended over stuff about what somebody said or what somebody did, you might want to examine yourself to see whether or not you really love the word of God, because he said, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Be a good verse to memorize. Psalm 119, 165, if you get a chance to memorize it. All right. If you love the word, you have peace. Second, I'd like to say this. In order to have peace, you ought to pray about everything. <laughs> Amen. Now, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Pray about everything. Let your request be made known to God. Your request. You want something? Pray and ask God about it. Ask God for it. I'd get wild if I was you. Just whatever you think of, whatever your quest is, ask it. And if he doesn't give it to you, it ought to be... You ought to have the peace of God in your heart, knowing that he knows what's better for you than you do. Well, the Lord didn't want me to have that. He knows best. Amen. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. He said, let your request be made known unto God. He didn't qualify it with anything else. He just, if you got a request, ask him. I've asked the Lord for stuff before and didn't get it. I'm wondering sometimes, the older I get, sometimes I'm wondering if uh, maybe uh, a not answered prayer is better than an answered one sometimes. <laughs> like you don't get what you asked for. Maybe better than what you did ask for. Amen. Most Christians miss the peace of God because they don't avail themselves of the power of prayer. Oh, they pray about stuff, and, and it's like, well, the big stuff, that's important. I asked him about that, but not the little stuff. He said, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Everything. You ought to pray about everything. I pray with my food. He, he, uh, Paul talks about that being like the least uh, thing. Whatever you do, whether in word or drink, do all the glory of God. Like that's the, the least of stuff. So I would pray over the food and then pray over the big stuff. I would say big stuff is like people getting saved. 
I said, well, it's sort of man profit. He's just gained the whole world, leaves his own soul. So I, I pray the Lord saves some people. And he saved some, and I'm still working on some in prayer that the Lord would save. Hopefully he'll do that. I know it's his will for them to be saved, but he's not going to overpower their will to save them. But I'm going to pray that he'll he'll uh, make it where they want to get saved. I pray for, for, for the Lord to make people miserable if, uh, if they reject in Christ. Just make them miserable until they do get saved. You say, yeah, not do that. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll hash that out of the judgment seat of Christ with you. Oh, I, I do that. I saw a sign the other day that said something to the effect of, uh, y'all give the Lord stuff in prayer, and then you come back and pick it up and <laughs> take it back to yourself. Uh, it, that's not the way it works. He said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, give it to him and let it go. He knows what's best. Second Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. That's uh, one of the means of that peace that the Lord gives you and blesses you with peace is through prayer. And if you haven't uh, prayed about it, you're going to get tore up about it. Pray about it. Give it to God. Lay it at his feet. All right. <clears throat> We're blessed at peace uh, through loving the word of God, through prayer. Second or third, I'd like to say this. We're blessed with peace by being spiritually minded. By being spiritually minded. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Paul said, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is not just life, it's life and peace. A, a saved man, as far as I can tell from the word of God, can be carnally minded. He can be worldly minded. He can be sober minded. He can be double-minded, but if he wants to have the peace of God, he needs to be spiritually minded. You say, what is that? Well, it's the opposite of what the world is. The world's worldly minded. Um, the, the TV, the news mafia, the internet, computers, radio, uh, magazines, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all those kind of things will tend to make you worldly minded, carnally minded. Now, I'm not saying you can't use them or whatever. We put this stuff on Facebook. If you're listening to this on Facebook, watch this and then turn the thing off. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you, there's there's people that spend hours and hours and hours in with those things on a daily basis, man. They will keep you tore up or torn up, whatever the proper tense is. <laughs> They'll keep you torn up. They'll keep you from having the peace of God. Uh, thinking all of us, man, you'll be thinking about the, the economy and, and the latest plague and the latest war and the latest stock market crash and the latest whatever they've got before. They keep you tore up all the time. I'd stay away from that mess if I was you. To be spiritually minded is to think of the word of God. I think about the Lord Jesus Christ, to think about heaven, to think about fellowship with God's people and, and uh, listening to, uh, to, to good music and listening to, uh, to preaching and, and, and listening to the, to the word of God. Uh, they, they have audio recordings of the Bible you can listen to. Uh, that, that helps your mind to be spiritually minded. Don't don't neglect your spiritual health. You can't see it, but you're you're two thirds spiritual, and the only one third physical, and that's what you see. You're a spirit, soul, and body that makes up your whole being. Uh, and really, you are your soul, and the spirit gives you life. Your body's just the carcass that that stuff's contained in. And yet we spend more time on our bodies than we do our soul and spirit. Somebody said one time, they said, if we fed our bodies like we did our souls, we'd starve to death in a week. And there's probably a lot of truth in that. <clears throat> if you want the peace of God, you're going to have to, uh, to, to be spiritually minded. You're going to have to uh, be a person of prayer in everything. And then you're going to have to love the word of God. Fourth, I'd like to say this, uh, if you want uh, p the peace of God, in Isaiah chapter 26, you need to stay your mind on God and trust him. The Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. 
If you want uh, the peace of God, trust him and nothing else and no one else. Uh, but, uh, our society is set up to where you, you can trust anything but God. And God wants you to trust him and not anything else. In Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Now, I've been told that Psalm 118, 8 and 9 are the two middle verses of the Bible. I don't know if that's true or not. I've just been told that. A lot of preachers tell you stuff that ain't true, but I find it interesting if it is that the the Bible kind of like hinges on God reiterating the importance of you trusting him and not man and not princes. <clears throat> Amen. Now, maybe I should break down and count the verses and the words and the letters to see if that's true, but uh, it just seems like not enough juice for the squeeze. I'll just take somebody's words for it. It makes good preaching. Amen. It's better to, to trust in the Lord than politicians. That'd be princes. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's anybody else. The Bible says in Psalm 40, verse 4, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. There's your politicians. Lie to us. And uh, Jeremiah 17, verses 5 to 7, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and a salt land, and not inhabited. And blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. If you want to experience peace of God, trust him. Trust him. I mean, if he says something, do it. Don't even question it. Just, and if your common sense tells you something else, go with his. Go with his wisdom. And give you peace. Be spiritually minded. Pray about everything. Love God's word. Last of all, I'd like to say this. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, if you want peace, uh, the peace of God, the first thing you need to do is be saved. And uh, I'm assuming everybody in here is just because I assume that don't make it true. But if you're listening to this on the Internet and somehow you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to pray that you be miserable until you do. I don't want you to have peace until you trust Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalm, uh, Isaiah 48, verse 22, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And if you're not justified, God sees you as wicked. If you haven't been justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God sees you as being wicked, and you will have no peace until you trust him. If you're trying to conjure up some peace in your heart by, uh, by your own means and your own methods, by uh, drinking something or smoking something, or injecting something, or taking something, that's a false peace. You're just deluding yourself. You're deceiving yourself. You're not going to have peace, real lasting peace, until you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You make peace through, with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Get saved today and be blessed with the peace of God. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight rolls a melody sweeter than song. In celestial-like strains, it unceasingly falls o'er my soul like an infinite calm. Ah, soul, are you here without comfort and rest, marching down the rough pathway of time? Make Jesus your friend ere the shadows grow dark. Oh, accept this sweet peace, so sublime. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray in fathomless billows of love. That's how you can have peace, folks. And if you want it, that's where you can get it. It's free to anybody. You come to Jesus Christ, he'll save you. You'll have peace with God. If you're saved, love his word. Amen, Christians? Love his word. Get in it. Read it. Study it. Meditate on it. Memorize it. <clears throat> Pray. Be spiritually minded. 
That's that's rough for a lot of folks. That Bible says that we're to set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. You're going to need to be spiritually minded to have peace, not carnally minded, not fleshly minded, not worldly minded. If you want peace, the, the Bible tells you how to have peace. You'd rather take a pill, wouldn't you? You'd rather, you'd rather drink it, wouldn't you? You'd rather shoot up. You'd rather ha have the world uh, bring in peace. It's not going to last. I've got a peace that's going to last. I have a peace with God, and you can too. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray that if somebody's uh, not saved, that here's this message, Lord, that they would trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, for those that are saved, we pray, Father, that uh, your word would uh, find fertile resting ground on the hearts of the saved that have heard it and help them more to, to see and to know how they can have peace and by loving your word. Uh, by praying, Lord, and making a request known unto you. Pray about everything, but by being spiritually minded. And, um, Lord, by uh, trusting you and, and, and keeping their minds stayed on thee. And uh, we pray you bless this message, Lord. Bless the remainder of the service, the fellowship that's to follow. And uh, pray that you bring us back this afternoon. And ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. You're dismissed.